Welcome to the Adam Does Movies podcast. I'm your host, Adam. Today's topic's gonna be on Disney. We've, we've, we've sampled it before. We've gone down that road. We've watched the House of Mouse kind of crumble over the years, it seems. Occasionally, we get a good one. But I think for the most part, that it's kind of suffered as far as its brand is concerned. And I think a lot of it has to do with biting off more than they can chew. They got the Star Wars stuff. They have the MCU. They have Fox. All of the projects that come with that. And it seems like it's churn and burn over there. I'm hoping they learn a lesson. They slow down. But the road ahead isn't looking great. I looked at some of the upcoming movies, which we're going to go over. It's pretty dire stuff. But today, the topic comes from Aaron G, a beautiful Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies at the mithril level. There's different tiers with different options. Every single one of them gives you access, though, carte blanche to 300 plus exclusive videos from the vault. Not the Disney vault, the Adam Does Movies vault, and they are only for Patreon and YouTube join members. You can also join on YouTube. Uh, via the join button. I th it's a great way to support the channel. I'm a one-man operation. Anyway, Aaron says, Adam, Booby, you should talk about Tomorrowland, which I've actually reviewed on my channel. So you can watch my Tomorrowland review. It's a, a film by Brad Bird, the director of Incredibles, Ratatouille. He did Ghost Protocol, if we're going to go live action. He did Iron Giant. The guy doesn't miss. And Aaron G's right. Tomorrowland is kind of like this hidden gem I wouldn't say it's a perfect movie by any means, but it is a good family flick. A little over two hours. You got George Clooney in the mix. You got some good kid actors. And you can't find this film anywhere. <laughs> For all the stuff Disney owns, they do a really impressive job of not putting their content anywhere. I couldn't find Tomorrowland on Hulu. Couldn't find it on Disney Plus, even though it's a Disney movie. Netflix? No. Max? No. Nah, they don't have it. The Cock? I checked it out in The Cock. Peacock doesn't have it. All these damn apps, it's nowhere to be found. So I have other means. I have other ways of, uh, of finding the content. We'll just say, we'll leave it at that. And uh, yeah, I watched it again. I really enjoyed it. So thank you, Aaron, for the recommendation. It was a nice trip down memory lane. A trip that unfortunately not many took. And I think that was kind of the beginning. I think Tomorrowland really is one of the first ones. Well, that on top of John Carter, another ma massive bomb for Disney. These live action, non-animated is all I mean by the live action. These regular movies did not do well for the House of Mouse. And so they found another way to make up that lost revenue. And that's just remaking their classic animated ones. But I looked through this list. Walt Disney live action films started in 1950 with Treasure Island. I have it in front of me. Treasure Island, the story of Robin Hood and his merry men. The Sword and the Rose. I don't even know what these movies are. I've heard of Treasure Island, but the story of Robin Hood and his Merry Men? No, that's that's not... The Sword and the Rose? Is that that's really a thing? Is that what the Sword and the Stone kind of played off of? I'm, I'm not sure. Rob Roy, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. That's way back in 1954. Fun little side about that. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. At one point, David Fincher, one of my favorite directors was penned to do a 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea modern film. How awesome would that have been? I don't know where it went. I don't know what happened over the years. It kind of, I guess it sank. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Yeah, a lot of these films I'd never heard of, but they were kicking them out. Kind of, uh, my voice was going there. I don't know what's happening. Like swallowed, swallowed my own spit wrong. And then I looked up lists of live action movies by Disney, and I'd like to... I'd like to peel back. I'd like to open the curtain and kind of take you down memory lane as far as some of these iconic, classic, nostalgic Disney films are concerned. This this list comes from BuzzFeed, so obviously it's just garbage. It's all over the place, willy-nilly, not in order. But I'm going to pick out some ones that stick out. Obviously, Mary Poppins. It's a, it's a cinematic classic. It's a musical. Who doesn't like Mary Poppins? A Spoonful of Sugar? And the nice thing about this one, it actually marries Mary Poppins with animated stuff. You got these live action characters hopping around, skipping, prancing with animated birds in the background. It gets a little loony, but that's kind of what we like. Mary Poppins Returns would come out many moons later. Emily Blunt taking on the role this time around. 
I didn't see it. I didn't care. We, the, when Mary Poppins Returns came out, they were already starting to do this whole let's let's remake things or sequelize things that don't need a sequel. And so yeah, I did I didn't have any interest. Bedknobs and Broomsticks is another one I grew up with. I can't say I like this film. I found it really weird. At one point, the kids are flying on a bed through the cityscape. It was out of my grandparents a lot. I guess they were they were into bed knobs and broomsticks. Haven't seen it in probably 20 some years. And that's being a little generous. It might I'm I'm trying not to sound too old by saying my actual <laughs> I haven't seen it in 75 years. The Muppet movie, that's right. Disney actually had the Muppet characters, which I think they have again. Maybe they always did. It, it, it's so hard for me to know what exchanges hands at what time or another. But there was the Muppet movie, the Muppet Christmas Carol, which we watch every single holiday over here. I love Christmas Carol. It's my favorite version, as a matter of fact. The Great Muppet Caper, Muppet Treasure Island. The Muppets were firing on all cylinders. Oh, look at this. We got Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And then there's that terrible sequel, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. But you got Rick Moranis in his prime in Hollywood playing the intelligent but somewhat aloof father. Shrinks the kids down to size because he leaves his, his tools just up in the attic for anybody to push a button. I mean, the guy the guy is not thinking. He's, not, he's thinking a lot, but not in the practical sense. Honey, I Blew Up the Kid was garbage. The, the little kid gets gigantic and he starts smashing down the streets. I don't even know what Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves is. Did that go to theaters? I've never, I've never, I never even heard of that movie. Incredible. Another fun one that I've actually reviewed on the channel is Who Framed Roger Rabbit? This was a marrying of Walt Disney and Warner Brothers characters. So you had Donald and Daffy on stage dueling pianos. You had Mickey and Bugs Bunny free falling out of a, you know, their base jumping off of a building and of course we have Jessica Rabbit. Uh, she she's built for me. She's built for action. <laughs> Newsies. I honestly forgot Newsies existed until I just read this. Uh, only thing I remember about Newsies is they're kind of Legend of Beggar Vance hats, and one guy jumps on top of a table, and I think he hangs onto a ceiling fan and spins around. It's a musical. It's a musical. Mighty Ducks movies, I was a big fan of. I grew up with these. You had the Mighty Ducks, D2, the Mighty Ducks, and then D3, the, the Mighty Ducks. They really stuck with that D thing in the later ones. You got to get the big D. Got to have the big D. I like the Bash Brothers. I like the Goalie. I like Knuckle Puck Time, if you remember that, where the kid would flip it up. Watch out, boys. It's Knuckle Puck. The, the sequel really went all in on the stereotypes you had a cowgirl with a lasso you had um the rebel kid with the do-rag it, it just it was just complete you know what i'm actually saying that wrong there was a cowboy with the lasso i can't remember what the girl's ability was they all had a special power like they're a street fighter character homeward bound and homeward bound 2 of course lost in san francisco the the sequel everybody was waiting for <laughs> hocus pocus which we just had a sequel for on Disney Plus that no one thought was good. You know what? There, there's moms out there that thought, Ho and fathers, I guess, to a lesser extent, that thought, you know what? Hocus Pocus 2 was just great. What a wonderful treat. What a wonderful time to be back with these sisters. It looked like ass. I tried watching it with my wife and kids. It was miserable. I don't think any of us finished it. I certainly didn't. Cool Runnings. This is a gem. This is a Sinbad v Is Sinbad in this? Or am I just making that up? John Candy's in it, I believe. The John Candy vehicle. I don't think Sinbad's in it even. I just kind of made that up. Unless he's an announcer. Uh, Jamaican bobsled team. Cool runnings based on a true story. This is really when Disney was starting to peak. And then you have Blank Check. One of the many hijinks-esque films where a, a young boy usually falls into money or falls into some extravagant life like Richie Rich and we just get to live through his eyes. We get to enjoy what he's enjoying which is fast cars and even faster women. Blank Check has a bizarre storyline uh, where this kid falls in love with a woman in her I think 30s when they actually go out on a date. It's, it's creepy stuff. Angels in the Outfield. Iconic. Classic. You got Doc Brown in this. 
And then, of course, there's the Santa Claus trilogy. Really Criterion-level stuff right here. The Santa Claus films, uh, Tim Allen's kind of... <laughs> Tim Allen's opus. His, his swan song to cinema. The first one's all right. I don't remember much of them. I'm not a big Santa Claus guy. You got a couple just trash movies in here. A Kid in King Arthur's Court? No. Get out of here with that. The Big Green was terrible. You remember that one with the soccer players? Uh, the one kid from the Goonies? Not the, I'm sorry, the one kid from the Sandlot is in there. He's kind of front and center. Terrible movie. And then, and then we do see our, our start of the live action, but this is, this is a one and done. Well, I guess a two and done, because you had 101 Dalmatians with Glenn Close, and then Glenn Close comes back for Glenn Closelier and 102 Dalmatians. 102 doll two mations you could have gone with. That came out years later, though. These were, these were three or four years apart upon release. Then you have the Brendan Fraser uh, Film Festival. You have George of the Jungle... George of the Jungle 2. I don't know. It, oh, then there's Jungle 2 Jungle, which doesn't have Brendan Fraser. But he was also in Dudley Do-Right. That might not be a Disney film. But it's certainly a Brendan Fraser film. Oh, gross. You know what? I take it all back. Disney shouldn't do live action anything. Now that I see what's coming up on my list, we have Air Bud. Air Bud Golden Receiver. Air Bud World Pup instead of World Cup. You know what? I'm back in. I like that pun. And then Air Buddies. Fuck it. I'm out again. I think there's like 80 Air Bud movies. They're only listing some of them here. Rocket Man. I never saw that. Flubber. With Robin Williams. This is where he was contracted with Disney to do two or three movies. It was this. It was Bicentennial Man. Which I also didn't see. It looked miserable. And I think there was a third one. The Parent Trap. Why, this is way, yeah, this is way out of order. BuzzFeed just threw this up. They didn't care. Haphazardly. Uh, Parent Trap. Uh, Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget, that's Matthew Broderick. And I think the sequel, Inspector Gadget 2, which straight to DVD trash or straight to VHS. I don't really know at the time what, what year it came out. That was a French Stewart film. French Stewart took up the hat and the trench coat for the sequel. I uh, didn't see either of them. They looked really, really bad. And now we get into kind of, again, these aren't in order. So really, it's anybody's guess when these came out. But I know The Kid with Bruce Willis. That was 90s. That was a really kind of touching, heartfelt film where Bruce Willis goes to see his younger self and, and convince him that everything's going to be okay. And remember the Titans, you have a Denzel Washington football movie. This one's really good. Uh, Princess Diaries, we, we always stand. We stand Anne Hathaway, no matter what. So Princess Diaries it is. And even the sequel, Royal Engagement. Cards on the table, I haven't seen the Princess Diaries movies. Gross, they made a Country Bears live action film? Oh my god, why? Holes, that's a gem. I like Holes with the beef. Shia, Shia LeBeau, and Sigourney Weaver as the head warden, kind of tough as rocks. She's got these kids going out in the middle of fucking God knows where, digging holes, looking for some buried treasure. There's this very elaborate set of flashbacks connecting three or four different stories together. I dig Holes. I dig holes. And I'm aware of the pun being thrown out right now. That's the point. If my beautiful rendition of Pirates wasn't enough, I'll just say it. Pirates of the Caribbean. All five of them. That's right. There's five of them. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Dead Man's Chest, At World's End, On Stranger Tides, and Dead Men Tell No Tales. I rank these on the channel. You can, you can find that somewhere. I dig these movies. Not as much as I dig holes. <laughs> bad laugh on purpose. Nah. Bad me. 
The Pirates movies are fun. I like Johnny Depp. I like Orlando. I like Kira Knightley. They all bring something to the table. Jeffrey Rush. Lots of good people in these films. They, uh, of course, start to lose quality by the fourth. But you got a really good trilogy, I think. You got a really good trilogy. We got Freaky Friday in the mix. Lindsay Lohan. Arguably at her peak. I don't really think she got much after this. Then she kind of fell into the knife and it was it was lights out for pretty much everyone involved with her. There's a Haunted Mansion movie that came out with Eddie Murphy. I did not like it. Of course, it's been remade just recently. It bombed harder than anything else I can imagine. But even the Haunted Mansion one with Eddie Murphy's trash. Eddie Murphy would go on to do a string of terrible films for many years to come. From Holy Man to meet dave to pluto nash the sky was really the limit for eddie miracle that was a kurt russell film i think like I'm, I'm i'm shooting from the hip here folks all i'm getting is a name and a photo and kurt russell's not in the photo and i did not see miracle my brother loves that movie it's hockey related i guess there's a really inspirational speech yeah all right i'll give it to him x gonna give it to him Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. We have another Lindsay Lohan vehicle. This might be the last time she... This is when she peaked out before falling under the surgery knife. Around the World in 80 Days. A nice celebration of uh, different actors going around the world. Jackie Chan is in this. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I might be making all of this up. <laughs> National Treasure. It's disgusting to me. That we never finish the national tr tr uh, blah, 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 that I can't talk. It's disgusting to me. Let me try this again. Take two. That we have not finished the National Treasure trilogy off. We have two Cage films and then some garbage Disney Plus vomit with a descendant. I don't know if it's a daughter or if it's, she's maybe not even related. I didn't watch it. No, no Cage, no interest. No soup for you. The Pacifier. Yikes. We can go ahead and just... Graze right over that. That's a Vin Diesel one. I think there was one with The Rock, too. That was The Tooth Fairy, I believe. Also Disney. Has to be. Who else is going to make that? Uh, then we kind of... Uh, I see now BuzzFeed's throwing me into the stuff that I've definitely grown past. Herbie Fully Loaded. Did not see it. Man, they really did a lot of stuff with Lindsay Lohan. Ice Princess. Didn't see it. Sky High. Wish I didn't see it. You heard me. Another Kurt Russell film. And I think, uh, no, I don't know who anybody else is in there. I didn't care for Sky High. I've tried watching it several times. It's just not good. I'm sorry, it's not. Chronicles of Narnia's hot trash. They made three of those somehow. I didn't think they actually finished the Chronicles of Narnia movies, but I believe there's more than three books, so maybe they didn't. Percy Jackson situation. They just they just said, screw it, we're done. Divergent situation. That might be another fun podcast topic. Movies that never... Oh, I guess I did movies that never finished the French. I just did that one recently. But I didn't bring up um, Divergent, as I call it, Diverge shit. Because I think I, I took it from the angle of movies that I wish finished the trilogy or that I assumed would. As far as Divergent goes, it lost a lot of money by the time the second or third one came out. They said, we're done. Same can be said for those others. Eight Below is a gem. Eight Below is a great movie about a bunch of snow dogs. Uh, it's set in Alaska or Antarctica. One of those places that has ice and cold and snow and you die really quickly. Maybe Minnesota for all, for all we know. Probably, probably Minnesota, really. Paul Walker is in this one. The, the late Paul Walker. Pour one out if you can. It's been a long day without you, my friend. This is, I think, loosely based on a real story. Again, I'm just kind of pulling all of this out of my ass. Going off of memory. These are Disney films after all. It's been a long time. I believe, though, this is a rescue mission. Where, where they're off, but then they have to go back for one of the dogs. I think, I think the dogs are left there. That's what it is. Paul Walker has to get out, get out of Dodge fast. Had to leave the dogs behind, and he goes back for them. The goal is to save these eight dogs who are stranded, hence the title, Eight Below. And spoiler, it's not going to end well for all the dogs. It's going to get a little sad. <laughs> like, it's really sad. You should watch it. The Shaggy Dog. You shouldn't watch that. 
Invincible. You should watch. It's, it's a fine one. That's that's a fine movie. Uh, there, yeah, there's a lot of this. I, I mean, I could go on, I guess. I thought we were almost done, but holy crap. Disney's been... Disney pumped a lot of movies since the 1950s. Let me see if there's any that really stand out. Obviously, besides Beverly Hills, Chihuahua, one through three. Are you out of your fucking mind? There's three of these? Enchanted? That was a fun time. Another movie they recently brought the sequel out to Disney+. Plus. Then it was horrible. It was worse than Hocus Pocus 2. Which seems almost impossible. But it was, it was worse. Race to Witch Mountain. No. No. Absolutely not. So then we have the Alice in Wonderland 2010 and Alice Through the Looking Glass. These also came out quite a few years apart. Tim Burton, I know, did the first one. I don't know if he came back for the sequel. Uh, not, not a fan. Not a fan of those. Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is kind of... It's playing off of Fantasia with Mickey doing the dun 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 Mickey's not in the live action one. Tron, Tron Legacy, there's John Carter, there's my John Carter. We got the Lone Ranger. Didn't see it. Something about Johnny Depp playing an Indian felt a little weird. Felt a little off. And then there's the Maleficent films, which play off of Sleeping Beauty. Maleficent, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. First one's pretty solid. Second one I remember nothing about, so it's probably not that great. And that also came out quite a few years after the first. And then I see Tomorrowland is on this BuzzFeed article. It's nice of them to throw it in there. Disney certainly doesn't seem to care about it. And then here we go. We start to get into our first big new push for the live action. It's a 2016. That's the Jungle Book. I gave this very high marks. My daughter absolutely loved it. It's a, a pretty looking film, had state of the art CG. It wasn't really a Jungle Book movie at all. It actually felt closer to The Lion King as far as the plot went. But, you know, it, I appreciated it for not being a carbon copy. It did its own thing. It was a much darker story, a lot grittier, uh, a lot of action. It was intense. It was an intense film. Director of Iron Man did that, John Favre. The BFG was one of the worst Steven Spielberg movies I've ever seen. And I really like the book. Not, not, not a good, not a good movie though. And then Pete's Dragon would go on to, or Pete's Dragon, Dragon, sorry, we put that A the right way, would, would carry on the tradition of remaking things. I don't know anybody that saw that film, to be honest with you. Beauty and the Beast, 2017, tale as old as crime, that you would remake this film because it was perfect. Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorite animated movies, full stop. When I saw that this pile of shit was getting remade, I was, I was just disgusted. I was absolutely disgusted. They're supposed to be making a sequel or a prequel or a whatever, a sidequel. I don't know. <laughs> God, Christopher Robin. That movie just looked dis just depressing. Dumbo. Okay, we're at the point now where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pivot over to... All the remakes they've done. First, let me just say, though, these are the new movies that have come out recently that aren't remakes or prequels or whatever. These are, I believe, original. And they all went to Disney Plus to die. Noel, Have you heard of it? I haven't. Anna Kendrick has. She's in it. Timmy Failure. Mistakes were made. What? Stargirl. What? Artemis Fowl. Sadly, I know what that is, and I saw it. It was horrible. Black is King. What? The one and only Ivan. Who are these people? What are these movies? Godmothered? Clouds? Upside Down Magic. Listen, I'm not... I'm not on Disney Plus every day, that's for sure. In fact, I'm rarely on Disney Plus... But there's no marketing for these even. They just come out on the platform unceremoniously. Flora and Ulysses? More like Flora and Useless. What are these movies? Safety? Are you out of your mind with this? They just go... Is there a money laundering scheme going on with Disney Plus? How are these movies even making money for the company? Are there people... Picking up subscriptions because Godmother's coming out next month? I find that hard to believe. I find it hard to achieve, really. 
we're gonna switch gears now. I wanna I wanna break off. I wanna tell you about all the Disney live action movies that have come and gone. We're gonna go through it quickly because I know everybody's got time. It's precious. We mentioned the 101 and 102 Dalmatians. We we did mention Alice in Wonderland, and the Sorcerer's Apprentice, and Maleficent, Cinderella. This was another one where they you know I do appreciate that they kind of went a little bit different of a route. This is before they started doing the carbon copy stuff. And that's where I think it's just embarrassing. Because if you're just going to remake the damn movie, what is the point? Jungle Book, Pete's Dragon. Okay, here we are. Beauty and the Beast, Christopher Robin, 2019 Dumbo. 2019 Aladdin. Aladdin was incredibly mediocre, which is high praise. 2019 The Lion King. They have already greenlit another one of these, which is also a prequel called Mufasa. That's the last thing I heard about it. That's the last thing I heard. Lady and the Tramp 2019. Shout out on Disney Plus. This was a Disney Plus exclusive. They had four remakes in the same year. Dumbo, Aladdin, Lion King, and Lady and the Tramp. All 2019. Gross. Mulan 2020. Cruella, 2021. So another live action, 101 Dalmatians. This one is like a prequel of the 101 Dalmatians. How Cruella got her start. It's got Emma Stone in it, so I'm already half in. But that's all I went. Because the movie's just long and tedious. And she they, they try to humanize Cruella, who's later going to go skin puppies for coats. No thanks. I'm good. Pinocchio 2022 this is a garbage film I could not get through it this is a Zemeckis joint the guy that brought us back to the future this is what he's been reduced to Pinocchio how about Pinocchio hell no how about Pinocchio hell no Peter Pan and Wendy 2023 that's something for you to put on the docket I've never even I've never even heard of this movie Released exclusively on Disney Plus. <sighs> okay, I guess it already came out. What the, what the fuck? The Little Mermaid. We saw that. We saw that one, friends. That was incredibly generic. Snow White, 2024. This is the new Rachel Zegler one. She's already kind of made a name for herself by bashing the original animated film. <laughs> it's so good. Her. Her interviews on this are hilarious. I hope she keeps going all in on this crap. Oh yeah, Snow White, trash, trash animated film. A lot of, a lot of kind of racist and sexist stuff. Not a fan. We're gonna, we're gonna be remaking it, shot for shot, same music and everything. You're gonna love it. But yeah, original, pretty much garbage all around. Lilo and Stitch is getting a live action film. Sure can't wait to be that, uh, to see that scary beyond all belief stitch on the big screen maybe he'll eat lilo in this version that'd be fun i love lilo and stitch that's a great animated film the hunchback of notre dame i can't believe they're doing this one i'm not even a big fan of the original animated one so i guess maybe in this case you could make it better i don't know i know some people that freaking love hunchback they're, they're big fans of it that that was a miss for me i apologize Oh, good. Bambi. Bambi's on the way. Bambi. You hear that, Bambi? That little little echo in the breeze? That's the sound of your mom getting fucking owned by a buckshot to the face. Your mom's dead, Bambi. Your mom's dead. It's time to grow up and become a man overnight, Bambi. No hopping around the woods with Thumper, Bambi. Yeah, that skunk over there? We're killing that skunk, Bambi. <sighs> Keep saying your name. Robin Hood. No. No. Put on the Michael Scott gif. No! Why are you redoing this? Oh my god, what? Disney was eyeing to remake 1973's animated film Robin Hood for Disney Plus. So not only, not only do you have the cojones to remake that freaking great animated charming classic robin hood with the fox and the snake and king you're going to shit it out on disney plus how dare you how double dog dare you actually 
Yeah, of course, of course this is coming. Hercules, who, who... A Hollywood reporter announces that a live-action remake of Hercules is in the works with Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings writer Dave Callahan attached. Good. Wonderful. Can't wait. Aristocats. Aristocats. Yeah. Fuck it, right? Aristocats. Throw it in there. Do it. Moana. Moana's getting the live-action treatment. That film's like three years old. Might as well. Elemental just came out on Disney+. Plus. Let's do a live-action Elemental. Huh? Right? What comes out next week? Let's let's pen a live action version. And then when we're done with all of these, we can do animated versions of the live action versions of the animated versions. We'll save that for 10 years down the road when technology is all built. It's all AI driven. We'll just prompt AI to say, hey, make us a new version of Aladdin. Computing. Beep, beep, boop, beep, 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 boop. There you go. Finished. Whole movie's done. Generated in the time it takes you to drink a cup of coffee. New Aladdin's on the big screen by the House of Mouse. I'm just... And the sad part is I can see it happening. I can see it happening. Listen, this is not a podcast. This is not an episode dedicated to bashing Disney. I'm, I grew up on Disney. Okay? I grew up on Disney. Do I think it's cool that they own, like, they have a monopoly on basically entertainment at this point? No, I don't think it's cool. I think it sucks. I think it sucks that they have Fox and Star Wars and Marvel, but they have them. So now all we can do is push. Now all we can do is educate and reflect and say, look at the good shit they used to do. And yeah, maybe not good as in, in the sense of it's going to be winning awards, right? I don't think anybody's going out to watch old dogs. Or uh, really anything with dogs. They have a lot of dog movies. Underdog, the Shaggy Dog, the whole Chihuahua line, the puppy films. They, they go all in on dogs. Where's the cat representation? Very little cat representation on this list. That's too bad. And they didn't make the Cats movie. So they, they, they don't get a pass on that. Which is probably for the best. But we're just asking for more. We're asking for a little effort. Maybe stop rehashing, remaking, rebooting, revisiting, reissuing, remakes, and whatever of all of your iconic classics, Disney. And I know, I know it's dangerous. We're going to come full circle, Aaron, on your on your uh, request as a producer here on this video. Aaron G's like, we should talk about why they're not doing this. And it's simple. It's money. It's money. At the end of the day, it always comes down to money. We had a lot of failures. The John Carter thing lost him a ton of money. Tomorrowland lost him a good chunk of money. Look what happened with the even even the tried and true formula of bringing a ride onto the big screen. They did this with Jungle Cruise a couple years back. That was a fine movie. Felt like a mummy style Brendan Fraser vehicle. You got The Rock in there. You got Emily Blunt. Kind of surefire success, right? And I think it made pretty good money. I think a sequel's in the works. So they tried it with Haunted Mansion. But again, these aren't even fully unique. You know, I know Tomorrowland is also based off of the theme park. It's based off of that whole section of Disney. They had the It's a Small World ride in the film. And they, they do some really fun things with that. It's kind of a celebration of Disney. They even have the pins and they're magical. And they activate this, uh, this futuristic time jump displacement thing. It's pretty cool. It's a cool film. But I don't think we're going to see cool films like that when you, you just keep remaking these other ones. But Disney looks at it and they say, well, people aren't paying for the movies. They're not coming out to see them. The solution, I think, is to maybe not throw $200 million into the project. Although, man, it's tough. It's tough. It, it's like they kind of built a beast and now they can't cage it anymore. Because COVID really shook things up. And these studios were so fast to jump into new tech and to say, all right, everything's day one streaming. You can go to the theaters or you can just have it on Disney Plus right away. I mean, Warner Brothers really set the stage poorly for that, right? Those day and day releases, Mortal Kombat, you could see in the theaters, you could see it at home. The Suicide Squad, theatrical release, also home release. You didn't have to pay extra. Disney made you pay extra on their platform for Mulan and Black Widow and a couple more. I think it was 20 bucks on top of your Disney Plus membership. But even so, they have baked into people's minds that you don't need to go to the theaters, 
because they're going to be home in a month. Haunted Mansion, I think, is already announced to be coming to Disney Plus in October. It was in theaters like a month ago. Why would people in their right mind drop $40 or $50 if they have a family or $60 sometimes to go see a movie they know they can watch from the comfort of their own home? And they don't have to worry about assholes that are all over the theater now. Inconsiderate jerks ruining the experience. Kids running up and down the aisles. People talking. People on their phones. It's not fun. It's not magical. So just do it in the, do it in the living room. Do it from the comfort of your own home. And so, yeah, I just saw the creator, which I thought was pretty cool. It looked big budget. This huge sci-fi. I found out it only costs like $80 million to make. And in 2023, for a movie of that magnitude, that is really impressive. Maybe I'm wrong on the number, but I'm pretty sure it was done on the cheap. But then I saw it only pulled in like 14 million opening day weekend. That is not good. That is not a good figure. So that movie's probably gonna bomb. And so there, my theory goes out the window of just make cheaper films, but you know, keep the quality up. Well, clearly people just don't wanna see it because they've now been trained for three years to wait for it to come to streaming. Obviously, you'll get lightning in a bottle films like Barbie, the Oppenheimer effect, great marketing. It drives people out because it's an event. It's like a community thing, right? Everybody's going so they can say they did it. It's a ride. Avatar 2 is the same way. People look at that and they're like, this is an experience that you can only have on the big screen. It is a ride. We'll go to it. We'll never talk about it again, but we were there. We were present. And that's the kind of stuff we're going to be seeing. And I think Disney's going to find that even churning out all these freaking remakes are going to start to lose their luster. They already went through the big ones. Aladdin, Lion King, Little Mermaid. Uh, what do you got left? You do sequels. Little Mermaid 2. Beauty and the Beast 2. I mean, they're just going to keep doing it. I am interested to see how it goes because I did... Little Mermaid barely made profit. It eked by profit and it did pretty poor when you compare it to The Lion King or Aladdin or Beauty and the Beast. There was a pretty big dip in those numbers. So we will see how this experiment plays out. Everything's cyclical, of course. You know, time time repeats itself. Uh, hopefully we will find a way to get people back into the theaters, whether it's some ballsy decisions by these streaming services where they say you know what there's not going to be anything coming to these platforms that are in the theaters for at least six months or whether streaming kind of just i don't think it's going to die out unfortunately it's probably here to stay and it's just going to keep getting uglier and messier with who has what product and where but i am rambling now i'm kind of going down a bunch of different rabbit holes that i could keep going down but i think we've said enough i think this is enough time i don't know why i keep saying we it's me I'm by myself here. <laughs> I feel like I'm having a conversation with you on the other end, even though you're not talking back. So just, just bear with me. Okay, thank you, Aaron, once again for the awesome recommendation. It was great going back to Tomorrowland. And it was nice being able to talk about this for a while. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Hopefully it wasn't too scatterbrained. You had a good time. Please leave a comment. Let me know. Like the video if you're on YouTube subscribe if you're on youtube and you somehow found this video i appreciate it i put out a new podcast every single monday on this platform it's on spotify and apple podcasts and other podcast services it goes up at 8 a.m so you get it earlier if you're on your commute into work or if you're just you know getting ready around the house you want to listen to a guy talk movies in the background throw me on and then it comes out on youtube at noon we do a live watch. I'm there. I'm in the premiere. I'm chatting with you, making comments. And uh, yeah, it's a good time, I think, for everyone involved. Outside of that, also on YouTube only, I do have the live... No, it's not... I'm sorry. It's not only. I've started bringing these over to the podcast too. On Tuesdays and Fridays at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, I do a live show. More movie talk. It's always movie talk. I engage with the community more in this though. And I started putting those on the podcast as well too. So really there's like three episodes going up a week on Spotify, Apple, and right here on YouTube. Plus movie reviews on YouTube, movie roasts. I'm doing a lot of things. I'm a one man shop. I have a wife. I've got kids. I've got a full-time job. This is a passion project and it is also a way that I, you know, make a side living. So any support would be great. Whatever you can do, I appreciate it. And hopefully you stick around for the next one. All right.
Take care.